the thing where I I guess I I had sort of even misremembered this in my in my own viewing. I guess I didn't realize, you know, because I knew the larger kind of like tabloid life surrounding Misha Barton around that time. But I think I didn't realize in my mind how much significantly younger she was in the sense when you're at that specific age group that she was like 17 and everyone else was like in their early 20s going out, having these different bonding experiences. And it was like, oh, yeah, like even for me to look back, I thought, oh, yeah, that had to have been so difficult. But like, Stephanie, you really talk about that era for her and specifically at the end, like how difficult, whether or not certain things that were surrounding her life, tabloids, there does sound to be like a very protective mother that was around, maybe feral dogs even at one point, (laughs) it sounds like was also an issue on set. But in general, like something that you reflect back on of like, wow, maybe there's something that we could have done also. Yeah, I mean, that the way that especially the media treated young women at that time, I think we've all taken a a hard look at. And it's it's kind of incredible to think about if you go back and actually look at the coverage of Misha at the time, that there is zero awareness that this is a child. This is someone under 18 um, and the way that she's treated by the kind of emerging paparazzi websites is really despicable. Um, And that that sort of was that was treated at the time as well. That's par for the course. That's just what happens when you get famous. Um, And the way in which that's gendered wasn't particularly addressed either. You know, that this was happening more to girls than it was to boys. That wasn't a part of the conversation. Um, And at the time, we were very much told that, like, you're bosses. You make sure people, you know, as long as everyone's showing up on set and doing their job, like, it's none of your business. Right. Stay out of it. Um, you're going to get in trouble if you cross across a line where it feels like you're, you know, trying to get under the hood of of someone's personal life. Uh, so we didn't do that. And I regret that. And I talk about it a lot in the book. Yeah, it's a really revealing chapter. I mean, there's so much in this book, but that was it was just really illuminating. Yeah, for us to like look back at that time and, and see how women were treated, whatever else. But also like the reaction to characters or like, what do you do in that situation was obviously a clear learning thing and moving forward from that. And Alan, I'm curious about your take. I was saying before you guys got here that I was in college during this era and I was studying abroad and we hadn't been watching the season because we were in Europe. We didn't. It's not like now where you can have like VPN to watch Love Island UK. <laughs> and and Misha Barton does this interview where she reveals her character's time. We were all freaking out. We're like, we've got to get this. We've got to see her die. And so we pirated the episode and watched it surrounding a laptop. And we're just like so gutted. Like, how is this happening? But Alan, for you as a critic, what was your take in that era around Marissa's death? What was your reaction to it? My reaction was this was coming at the end of a season where there had, you know, with with all due respect to Josh and Stephanie, the stories for Marissa that year had not been great. And there was a sense of, well, maybe the show is running out of, things to do with her and, and I know there's sort of, a lot in that chapter too from writers talking about the enigma that was Marissa and writing for her which is also fascinating by the way yes and that's a, that's a running thread throughout the book Marissa was always clearly a, a challenge to everybody I talked to but you get the sense of like okay we we don't know what to do with her so in that sense maybe killing her off in the moment seemed like a good idea Obviously, it was not. Obviously, the Marissa fans greatly outnumbered, you know, the people who gravitated more towards the comedic aspects of the show like me. And, you know, they didn't come back. And so in that sense, you know, it it was a mistake. But in the moment, I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. Let's see what they can do with that. Well, you know what? It also, in a way, weirdly, even though it was like a gutting thing to happen, it didn't tarnish the legacy of the series, which I think a lot of shows stumble with and don't recover from, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like we look back on it like as a whole, it's so good that I almost like forget that moment even. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely the number one question people ask us. Sure. Why the, did you kill Marissa? Yeah. But but also, uh, and they tell you, it's like they were very much star-crossed lovers. It almost was like it kind of had to be. She did have, she was a tragic heroine in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. 